Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. Today doing the what's next on middleweight contender Carlos Adames following his career best win and upset 10 round majority decision over former world title challenger Sergey Daryavinchenko. It was Adames' first fight at middleweight and you know he hadn't really been in a big fight since his um, uh, split decision loss to Patrick Patrick Teixeira a couple years uh, back in 2019 when he fought him for the interim junior middleweight title and uh, came up just a little short in that one. So he had it, you know, he's been with the PBC and he headed into this one and was trying to upset the apple cart. And you know what? I, I, I figured he was a live underdog. I knew it was going to be a tough fight, especially for Dario Vincenco after a 15 month layoff and loss to Jamal Charlo last year. I figured it was going to be a tough night for him, but I picked uh, Dario Vincenco still to win, and, but I'm not surprised that Adamas pulled it off, so big win for him, and you know, the likely option is that um, this was an eliminator to get to Jaime Minguia, and the winner of that would fight Jamal Charlo for the WBC title, but let's run through the top 10 and see what possibly could be next for Adamas following this upset um, victory of his over Dario Vinchenko. So Adamas for me has moved into the, the top 10 for sure. I think I have him around uh, seven or eight right now. Um, you know, I, I officially have to do my top 10s uh, coming up here um, uh, this next week or so. So I'm gonna be running through that. But unofficially the top 10 right now, we start with number one, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, the IBF champion. Triple G has a... Uh, has a couple he has a unification bout with Ryota Murata coming up and um that's supposed to come up anyways if it does he'll be dealing with that and then probably have mandatories due uh after that for possibly both his belts um I know uh Esquiva Falchow is the uh number one contender in the IBF now and I know Arislandi Lara is waiting around for a mandatory uh, defend, you know, mandatory shot as he's the WBA regular champion. So I really don't believe that Adamas and Triple G has any kind of chance of popping off. Number two is the undefeated WBO champ Demetrius Andre. Um, this is a tough. Adamas is not a top contender in the WBO right now. So, excuse me, they would have to um, want to make this fight and this is the two promotions work you know they would have to work together to zone and um and matchroom and the pbc and i don't see that happening so i'm going to say no to this one uh number three is jamal charlo now um if jaime Minguia goes in a not it goes in a different direction than to face carlos adamas i can see um like for instance if rio de Murata, uh and triple g doesn't pop off like it's supposed to um you know, if that fight doesn't happen, that unification, I can see Triple G and Jaime Minguia fighting each other earlier in the year. And um, then that leaves the door open for Charlo to defend his title against um, against Carlos Adamas because they're both with the, the PBC. And Charlo, you know, he's dicking around anyways, uh, waiting around for a big time title fight instead of fighting the top dog. So, this this fight, uh, Adam is winning and being a PBC guy is kind of kind of uh, opens the door for Charlo to fight another PBC guy and a decent uh, middleweight. So this fight, I do believe, is possible to happen next if a couple things don't go the, uh, according to plan uh, with the um, with an IBF eliminator. Number four is Jaime Minguia, and this is the most likely fight right now for Carlos Adamas is to fight Jaime Minguia in a mandatory title fight, and the winner gets Jamal Charlo uh, in the second half of the year. So I believe this is the fight that's most likely going to happen for Adamas next. Number five is Arislandi Lara. Now, this is another option right here because Lara is a PBC guy. Now, the, the thing that might hold it up is, um, is Lara is is probably soon to be ordered to fight for the WBA title unless the fight with Murata and Triple G goes forward. Now, uh, Lara's probably going to still sit there and wait for the winner of that fight, and he'll probably just take a tune-up bout while he waits for that. I mean, the fight's got to be ordered first, but they're waiting around for that. But the thing that leaves this, this as an open option 
is um, is if for some reason Adamas doesn't get the eliminator with um, with uh, what's his name uh, the guy uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name um, with Jaime Minguia, then you know Lara being a PBC guy and Adamas being a PBC guy. Uh, that's a that that could be a logical choice right there. So I'm leaning towards a less likely that this fight happens, but I wouldn't completely rule it out because they're both with the same promotion. Number six is Kazakh style, uh, Janabek Amakanuli. Um, not likely. Amakanuli has been approved to fight for the uh, WBO title against Demetrius Andrade. Andrade's been rumored to be moving up in weight um, in his next fight, but that's not a hundred percent. Um, you know, he's waiting around to move up to possibly get the Canelo fight. So again, that's not a hundred percent that that fight's going to go down, but, um, Adamas and Amit Kanuli, not likely unless Adamas were to get bumped up in the WBO rankings and be able to fight for the vacant belt against Amit Kanuli. Uh, that's the only way I could see that fight taking place. I believe I have, uh, um, Adamas at number seven now. Um, number eight is Chris Eubank Jr. Um, Eubank's fighting Liam Williams next as he's trying to line himself up for a big shot with um, with uh, possibly Triple G. Um, you know, I wouldn't completely rule it out, but I, I don't think this one's possible next. Adama's and Eubank. Number nine, Ryota Murata. If Murata doesn't fight Triple G next, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to have to make a mandatory defense against Arizlandi Lara. So I don't see Adama's and Murata going at it. And then um, last at number 10 is a rematch with Dario Vinchenko. I mean, I wouldn't be completely shocked that they ordered a rematch, but what's the point? He already beat him. Um, but I would like to see these guys fight maybe in an eliminator, a t uh, you know, a 12-round eliminator instead. Um, but that's the only way I can see it popping off is if Jaime Manguia passes on his mandatory uh, opportunity um, instead of fighting Adames to become the, the final, uh, you know, in a final eliminator then I could see them possibly ordering a rematch between the two, uh, between Jerry Vinchenko and Adamas to leave no doubt, but I don't think that's likely. So for me, for Carlos Adamas next, I, I'm predicting he's going to fight Jaime Minguia for the, um, for the, in a final eliminator for the WBC. But because he's a new face, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if uh, Jaime Minguia decides to go in a different direction, I wouldn't be surprised if the WBC orders Adamas to fight uh, Charlo in a mandatory uh, defense because Charlo, uh, you know, this is a new face now for the PBC and he's made a name for himself. So he beat Derevinchenko, Charlo beat Derevinchenko. They're both with the PBC. It's a fight that makes sense. So we'll see. But that's it. That's the what's next on Carlos Adamas, the uh, world middleweight contender right now hope you guys enjoyed it true boxing you've been hit with the truth